Hey, I'm Cargo Brotherhood. As you know, we make a ton of stuff for the Caltech Sub 2000 as far as the trigger guard, the aluminum trigger, the trigger spring kit to reduce your trigger pull, the single point sling mount, the double finger charging handle, and a number of other upgrades that are coming in the near future. I want to do a quick troubleshooting video for some simple pain points that tend to happen from time to time. A lot of stuff that I get via email. This hopefully will help clear it all up. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate and simulate some difficult uh, troubleshooting issues that we see from time to time so I hope this video is helpful and informative so this is a brand new sub 2000 gen 2 you can see that Caltech's already done the modification here on the front site which a lot of us have seen and this is still a gen 2 but they've done some modifications along the way some other things that I've noticed here recently is there's some variations in the mold as well for the actual trigger assembly. So we're going to tear this apart and look at an issue that I've seen in the last month or two more commonly. Um, and I've gotten a lot of questions via email. And I had the customer and I actually figured it out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show, um, this is on a customer's fire, I'm going to show how to troubleshoot this and fix the new Gen 2 issue we're seeing from Keltec with the variation in the mold. So as you'll see here when you go, we've already done a trigger spring kit installation. We've added a new aluminum trigger, trigger guard, uh, single point sling mount, and the uh, double finger charging handle. So everything's great except when we went to function test it. Okay, so we, you know, works. Okay, safety works. Okay, look, actually you see that? It sticks back even on safe, which is just new. Okay, but we'll pull the trigger, charge it, go to release it huh okay so it's working there but when you pull the trigger on safe it's sticking back so obviously we've got an issue here there's some rub something's happening before I started rolling this video it was actually opposite it was working on safe I could pull it back and forth just fine but when I pulled the trigger and I held it depressed charged it it wouldn't release so now it's okay so there's clearly some sort of clearance issue we're gonna tear this apart all right, so here's something quick. When you're field stripping your firearm, technically you can push on the buffer, push this pin out like so, pull it out the backside. This is a brand new firearm. It hasn't even been shot, so it's a little stiff. But that would be the textbook method for removing your buffer and your buffer pin, butt stock, pull back on your charging handle. Oh, pull the recoil spring out because that's what locks the charging handle in place with the charging handle and then move the bolt. Hey guys, when removing this castle nut, collar, whatever you want to call it, a lot of AR-15 guys call it a castle nut. Um, so when you're removing this, it helps to have an extra set of hands here to really grip it for you. Um, I recommend using a brass punch over the steel punch, which we've done in the past. You know, in the past we've shot the video with a steel punch. It, the steel punch will mar up this collar more than a brass punch brass punch is softer it'll take the abuse before the collar will take the abuse so that's the new recommendation also if you've got a strap wrench it may help that may work to get it off uh, that's something else I'll typically recommend if you guys send me an email um, we are in the process of possibly making a wrench for this so comment below if you guys want a wrench it'll probably price around 12 bucks if that's something you're willing to splurge on let me know we'll make them uh, we may even eventually just throw them in with the kits that's an idea too um, so an extra set of hands to brace it, take your brass punch, and what you want to do, you know, get it, get it started there, and then move to the subsequent notches, and eventually you'll be able to twist it off by hand. There we go. So. See the Loctite there. And then on closer inspection, you can see you know, kind of the brass marks. What I do is I just take some CLP, I get on a rag, and this is what's great. The CLP will just stay on this rag for a while, stays fairly wet, and you just wipe it off. So, and you can see how nice. Yeah. So we hardly did any damage to it, nothing too major. So this is a much better option than using the actual steel punch. Use a brass punch if you're going to do anything. It'll, uh, it'll save you your collar. If you do tear these up, you can get them from Keltec for 8 bucks. So, you know, don't worry too much. Alright guys, this is another one I see a lot. Let's talk about these screws. So you're coming along here, you got, you got the back side out, or at least in these two positions we got the back side, okay? 
and now we're on the top of it here and we're going to start unscrewing and it's just spinning in place all right or we're going to simulate this one this one actually started cooperating but if you've had this issue you know exactly what i'm talking about it'll just free spin so you're just trying to unloosen it and it's just free spinning that little threaded stud is just spinning inside same here i think this one's actually doing it so this one is misbehaving all right see me screwing it there i'm unscrewing it nothing didn't even budge just free spun so the idea is take a little bit larger allen wrench there and just push on it okay put a little tension behind it all right or at least on the okay that's the top one we'll just do it and that's the idea so you put a little tension on it and it comes right out now let's look at that bottom one the one that was actually giving us some issues same thing you're just gonna you know put that actually push on it first make sure it's all the way out and then put a little tension on it right and then take your two and a half millimeter Allen wrench you can almost see it spinning underneath too it'll, it'll lock up here see it coming out We're getting some progress Boom. so <clears throat> it's just about having that that opposite pressure now another thing I've seen on this top threaded stud here which this is a neat little trick to save you some time and some frustration which nobody's got time for that there we go. Alright, so this is the neat little trick. So this top threaded stud on the site, you can only do it with this one. Um, so you push through like so. And if it's still just really tight in there, you can actually hold on to the threaded stud like so with some pliers and then remove the screw this way so I hope this is helpful there's a few different options and tricks here you can use it's all going to be dependent on your situation but uh, let me know what you think of that or if you guys have had any other little tricks you've used to get through this process alright guys here's another one that we get a lot of questions about so your ejector back here you see that so it sits behind the receiver. This is your receiver, okay? So it sits behind the receiver. It actually mounts into the polymer, it actually locates here, okay? So that's where it initially locates, then the receiver sits on top. So your ejector sits like this. So you've got the curved portion on the back side here towards the buttstock of the rifle, and then you've got this kind of just straight edge almost it's like at a 45 degree angle straight down and that's towards the front of the rifle so you've got this kind of curved contoured edge here I think you can see that so curve contour straight alright so that's how the ejector set up and then you've got your upper feed ramp here and it locates into the polymer like this so you've got a cutout between the two little tabs here there's a piece of polymer plastic here and that's your, so that's your upper feed ramp and then your lower feed ramp is right here it's this piece of plastic so I'm actually gonna pull it out for us and just take it off so you can see your lower feed ramp see how it sits like that it's kinda got a contour right there so it's got a bullet contour so when it's feeding the ammunition right and that'll pop right off as you see so it'll pop right off like that okay so if that happens you're just gonna put it back on it just pops right on there and you see how easily that upper feed ramp just fell off so typical issue that can happen I just wanted to cover it make sure we're all tracking on the same page 
Okay, so we've got our upper feed ramp here. We've got to put that in. So the easiest way to figure out how it goes in is to just kind of mock it up. Whoops, mock it up here on the polymer. All right, so the upper feed ramp fell out. So the way we put it back in is, once again, we're paying attention to these edges. You can see there's this contoured edge here and there's this straight edge back here. So the contoured edge is pointing towards the buttstock, once again. So you can see there's some similarities there. So you're gonna drop it right, right in here on that slot on the receiver, right next to the, just above the ejection port, okay? You can see the contoured edge right there pointing towards the rear, towards the buttstock, and the straight edge is right here. Okay? And then on closer look, you can see here how the ejector locates into the polymer trigger assembly like this. It just sits right in there, and you can see that contoured edge towards the rear, towards the buttstock, and that straight kind of 45 degree angle edge forward. So all we do now, well we lost the upper feed ramp again, so go ahead and locate the tube on the ejector first. Good. It pops right in. Make sure your lower feed ramp sits in there flush against this threaded stud. Right? It's nice and flush. There's no gaps down here. And then go ahead and grab your upper feed ramp. Contoured edge towards the rear there. Drop it in. And it'll locate right there between that polymer. There's a little piece cut out for it to locate. Good. All right, guys, here's two trigger assemblies, ejection port side from two different sub 2000s. This one was purchased in September 2016, and it's a universal mag, Gen 2. This one was purchased in September 2015, and it's a Glock mag. Now, obviously, there's going to be some different magazine configurations here, so there will be some different things in the polymer. Um, you know, but that's something we have to work with as far as making all the parts jive together appropriately. So when we designed our parts, we designed them off the Glock version. Now, kel shouldn't have any varying parts in terms of triggers. They should be universal. All that stuff should be universal. Um, but as we know, kel can make changes from time to time. As we've seen with the Gen 2, you know, they've done some changes to some things that they've had issues with, like the front sight. They've put a little lock nut on the front. Um, you know, we're still evaluating if that's really a solid fix. Now, what we've noticed with guys having the trigger hang up from our parts, we've noticed there is an issue, a clearance issue right here on the polymer. Now, this could be because it's a universal magazine and that it's slightly different, or it could be that it's newer. And that's what we've noticed. It's Gen 2s that were created recently. And at the time of this video, it's December 2016. So anything in the last three, four months, we've noticed recently we're having a couple issues with guys from time to time having a trigger. They pull the trigger and it doesn't reset. And this is going to be the fix. So I'm going to dive into that. So I just kind of laid out some of the variances there, some of the stuff that could have gone wrong. We're still kind of narrowing it down what it could be specifically, but we do know what the fix is. There is a variation in the polymer that's causing the issue. So let's show how to fix it. All right, so the fix for the trigger not resetting, we've got to take some sandpaper. This is 100 grit sandpaper, and we're using just a punch. We're going to stick it inside. You see we have it folded up. We're actually just going to kind of wrap it up, right? Or just roll it up there. And then you've got just this little edge we're going to put inside. So the idea is we want to shave this back edge right here. So we're going to use some sandpaper and do that. So just, you know, and thin it out, whatever you need to do, so you're not rubbing anything unnecessarily. But, you know, just small little adjustments here. Don't go crazy with it. 
just a minor clearance issue. But obviously do enough for it to clear. You don't want to put it all back together and then realize, you know, you only got halfway there. All I'm really doing is taking that sharp edge off so that that trigger, that top trigger pin, that black one, so that it doesn't actually hit or rub on that lip. I'm just going to take that little wet rag of CLP just kind of clean it off get all those little plastic burrs out of there and you can see we've taken it down a little bit. We've gotten rid of that edge. So it didn't take a terrible lot of sanding, but we really did smooth it down. So the lip is gone. You can see how much sharper that edge is on the other side there. Just to be safe, I'm going to take a little bit more off. I don't want to put it back together and realize we got to go back in. <clears throat> it's not going to hurt it. I'm just trying to make sure we giving ourselves a little margin of safety here for it functioning properly. You know, and I think we're going to see this in the future. You know, Caltech's a small company, just like us, and I get it. You know, they have issues with their stuff, and they make adjustments on the fly. You know, they're not going to create a Gen 3 uh, just because they were fixing their Gen 2, so I get it. You know, and some of you guys have actually called Caltech and talked to them, and, you know, they're always going to say, yeah, we didn't change anything, you know, Gen 2 is a Gen 2, but, I mean, obviously, you guys have eyeballs. You can see the front sight does look different on the uh, the front sight on the Gen 2s that are on the shelf right now look much different than the uh, than the ones that you know have been on the market for some time like even the ones that I purchased a year ago so I mean I'm glad they're 
adaptive and they're making changes that need to be made. So, but as things change, you know, we'll make these videos to make sure that, you know, everybody's covered at least when they run into issues. You know, especially if there's like a little polymer adjustment we gotta make like this one. I mean, obviously this would require a video for us to be on the same page. So let's clean it up one more time. I'm gonna put it back together and make sure that we're not getting that trigger hanging up. As you can see too, when I was testing it, I was surprised. I was surprised when um, I had the trigger depressed and I charged the bolt back that it actually sprung forward again. So you can tell, I mean, it was actually probably from just me you know, testing it a few times, it started to kind of wear into place. So this, oh yeah, look at that. That's good. That's a nice rounded edge. That's what we want. See how smooth that is? That's what we want. So we're not taking, you know, we're not getting rid of all the polymer. We're just smoothing that edge out, kind of like the feed ramp. You know, we're just giving it a little bit of help. Whereas, see the opposite edge there, it's pretty sharp. Okay, that's the idea. All right, so we just finished the adjustment on the polymer, shaving that little edge off, and look what we got. It's on safe right now, okay? Look at that. Awesome. Now we're gonna switch it back over to fire, pull the trigger, keep it depressed, releases. Releases. So, that's the solution guys on these newer Gen 2's there's a little bit of a variance in the polymer I don't know what it is could be the molds maybe the molds are getting old or maybe they changed the molds so something to be aware of with this trigger we're gonna have to do that slight little modification if you've got a newer one it may just behoove you to go ahead and do it it's not gonna affect the integrity of the firearm it's just a slight little few thou variance in clearance so highly recommend it um, everything functions great. We just went through that function test and it performs flawlessly. I hope this helps.